This game has been in development for over five years, and this one looks insane, but barely anyone's heard of it. Here are the eight best upcoming survival games of 2022. Number eight, Retreat to Enon. Developed by Head West and set in the year 3600 CE, this game has tons of potential. Humanity narrowly avoided extinction after choosing life and peace over wars and fighting. Your goal is to learn how to properly live in harmony with nature, which is actually a really cool idea. Enon is actually the island you spawn in on, and there are tons of secrets for you to supposedly discover. The game will feature base building, crafting, scavenging, and according to them, a relaxing experience. The map includes several biomes and quote, breathtaking, unquote, underwater environments. There's also an arctic area and a jungle area, and a super advanced weather system. Now, honestly, this sounds like my perfect game, but there's a reason it's at number eight. Something about the graphics just doesn't quite sit right with me. It looks great, but a part of it just feels off for whatever reason. I do think this game can turn into something truly special though. Oh, and there's also meditation in this game. So when they said it offers a relaxing experience, they really weren't joking. It's set to release in the third quarter of 2022, so that should just be around the corner. And it's definitely going to be on my wish list. Number 7, Farm Zone a completely different style of survival game to the regular, which is why I wanted to include it. It's developed by Xwalt, and at first it looks like a really cute, aesthetic looking, peaceful survival game. But there are actually zombies for you to battle. Your main goal is to thrive as a farmer, all while trying to fight off zombies to protect your land. There are nearby towns you can use to sell your produce, buy tractors, and help build new defense systems. The game is pretty secretive though, with not everything being revealed, meaning there is so much more to discover. They do have a pretty comedic section on their Steam page though that clearly states it includes no horse, no cinematic story, no huge explosions, not even small ones actually, and no pineapple pizza, which is why it's taken seventh place. Pineapple pizza is amazing and it needs to be in every game just to taunt those who haven't yet fallen for the pineapple. It seems like Stardew Valley in first person, which is something I'm definitely going to give a go. It won't be everybody's favourite for sure, but if you're looking for something more realistic, then stick around because you won't be disappointed. Number six, Among the Trolls. Developed by Forbidden Studios, awesome name by the way, this game looks so cool because it depicts a realistic Finnish forest in Finland. You'll be embarking on a mysterious quest to find your vanished grandparents while learning how to survive in the wilderness. Among the Trolls is packed with Finnish lore and impressive looking graphics, so it'll definitely be an immersive adventure. Initially, they're saying it'll release into early early access and stay that way for over 20 months until they eventually look to release version 1.0 which will include four different chapters in the storyline and many more features. Currently the game already includes eight different areas to explore, loads of different items and building blocks but according to Forbidden Studios this is only 30% of what they hope to have in the game in version 1.0. That's a pretty impressive promise. In Among the Trolls there are two characters you can play as to complete your journey. One being Alex and and the other is Anna, both of whom have obviously traveled from the US to visit their grandparents, blah, blah, blah. And it's your goal to essentially live out their lives. A lot of seemingly realistic lore with a hint of magic too. Literally, there are magical attributes that you can collect and use. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Number five, Power World. I'm sure you've heard of this one. So before we get into some more underrated ones, I just had to include it. Developed by Pocket Pair and set to release sometime this year, it's an open world survival crafting game where you can befriend and collect mysterious creatures called POWs. You can make your POWs fight, build, farm, and even work in factories for you. Now, has anyone told Peter about this game? Because that sounds pretty... never mind. My favourite pal is definitely this blue looking fella. I mean, it's literally just an angry looking duck. What's not to love? Now, this really sounds like a fantasy game, and oftentimes those can be a bit too easy easy to survive in as they often focus on other elements. But apparently Power World isn't like that. You can actually die of starvation, there is also harsh weather to combat, and so-called illegal poachers. And yes, if you've got no food,
food, you can actually eat your POW. And as for building, you can create almost anything. Put your POWs to work and you can make pyramids, spaceships, modern mansions, and almost anything you could probably think of. You can even create your own farm, of course, ran by your POWs, and as I mentioned earlier, factories are also in this game. I mean, it's great we're giving these POWs jobs, but is this guy really happy with his life? POW World is also multiplayer and includes tons of exploration, all of which can be done while riding a POW, by the way, and I'm sure much more for us to discover. Anyways, I think I've said the word POW enough for the next year, so can we just move on, please? Number four, Sons of the Forest. Developed by N Night Games and set to release in October of this year, it promises a seriously terrifying looking open world survival horror experience. Honestly, I know this one's popular given it's connected directly to the forest, but I hadn't heard of it until I actually did the research for this list. I know I'm uncultured, but I'm learning, guys. In this game, you're sent to a remote island in order to find a missing billionaire, and the hellscape you land in is infested with cannibals, and it's your job to survive by doing anything possible. Crafting, building, alone, or with friends. It sounds like a terrifyingly immersive game because of those graphics. They look insane. Like the forest, but ten times better. And I do think the forest is a beautiful game, by the way. Another feature that is probably my favourite in any game is the changing of seasons. In spring and summer, you can fish out salmon from the streams, and then for winter, you should be saving up meat. As in the cold, the food is apparently quite scarce, and you also won't be the only one looking for a meal. Those cannibals are demons, by the way, and they have pistols, axes, and some other unpleasant surprises waiting for you. So definitely not a game for the lighthearted. Number three, Madison, a game I am so, so excited for. Created by Bloodus Games and has been in development for over five years. This is a massive passion project by what I believe is a solo or duo development team. And it's coming out next month on July 8th. But let's take a look at the actual game. Madison is a first person psychological horror game that delivers a quote, immersive and terrifying experience, unquote. So why while it's not an open world game, it has the survival tag on Steam, so that counts, right? Your goal inside of this game is to take pictures of any paranormal activity you experience, explore your unknown surroundings, and of course, survive. The lore behind Madison is also pretty intriguing, actually. You wake up locked in a dark room, hands covered in blood, and you play as a person named Luca. You're forced to continue a gory ritual by a demon which will force you to commit pretty abominable acts, and it's your job to use your instant camera to survive this torture. Now, I don't quite know how this camera is going to save your life, but perhaps someone in the comments does. It appears the camera activates some sort of events, but there is much, much more to explore and find out, and I can't wait to do exactly that. As for the price for many of these games, I don't actually know. This info often isn't made public, but I'm sure if you dig deep enough, you can probably find the planned price tags in the game's Discord or on any of their socials. By the way, I do think pretty much all of these games will have a price tag of more than $10 or so, given their pretty high quality. Number two, Rooted. The famous thumbnail picture for this video, and a game that has me so on edge about when it will finally be released. Developed by Headlight Studios, a reasonably small development team, I think Rooted is sure to surprise a lot of people. The animations look beautifully smooth, and the graphics look pretty cool too, thanks to what I can only assume is the next-gen technology. Like any survival game, there's law. 20 years of bacteriological war decimated the human race, and you are one of the few survivors. It's your job to fight for safety in this pretty post-apocalyptic world. Explore forests, experience different seasons, find artifacts, craft new items, build cozy houses inside of old abandoned buildings, and thrive. One of the key features of Rooted is the constant evolution, though. Headlight Games boasts that, quote, Rooted's law allows us to evolve the player's experience through throughout the game, even after hundreds of hours. Over time, you gain access to new items, new areas, new crafts, but also events that have a major impact on the world in which you evolve, bringing each time new elements of comfort, but also danger and gameplay." Unquote. And yeah, this game is co-op, but you could technically run it solo. I can't wait to try this one out, and although it isn't developed by a AAA game development team, I have high hopes for it, and because of how underrated it is, I think it really deserved the number 
number two spot. If you're enjoying this video though, consider subscribing as it does help me out a lot more than you think. Number one, Nightingale, a mysterious survival adventure game with pretty much everything you could think of. Developed by Inflection Games, Nightingale is set to release in late 2022 and will change the survival game scene in my opinion. Similar to V Rising in the way it presents a completely abnormal fantasy realm for you to explore, otherwise known as the Fey Realms of Nightingale, your goal is to craft, build, fight away monsters and of course, survive within this fantasy world. The graphics are insane and the lighting is even better. But the reason why Nightingale has taken first place is because it's so damn polished and honestly looks like it could be the perfect game. It's a first person PvE open world survival crafting game that you can obviously play alone or with friends. You're dropped into a crazy looking world cut off by the collapse of an arcane portal and you've got to become a skilled realm walker to survive. I have no idea what being a realm walker includes. Never mind being a good one, but I'll give it my best shot. Genuinely, the entire atmosphere in this game has me really excited. Not only that, but after taking a close look at how building in this game will work, I don't think I've ever wanted to let my creativity run loose as much as I do in this game. It honestly looks as if the possibilities are genuinely endless, almost like Minecraft. And if you're feeling lazy, you can literally recruit NPC workers to help you out, automate whatever you want, and even get resources for you. I know for a fact that this game will be at the top of my wish list. But which one of these will you be playing? 